we've given kids right the ability to run from any responsibility we've allowed them to run from any kind of obstacles that can come in their way with these transfer rules that you see in ncaa like the portal right like hey i'm not playing here let me just take my like pack my shit and go Artiaga drives one to center miller hustling over diving catch by ian miller a great catch Three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Nine Hope Podcast. This is your host, Ian Miller. Today, I am joined again by ex-Major League catcher and former Wagner Seahawk. Crazy to say, Nick Dini. Nick, how you doing, brother? What's going on, man? What's happening, Mildew? Everything's good over here, bro. Let's get back into the weeds. Let's piss some more people off. That's Uh, right. And here we go. That's right, dude. So we have been, uh, you know, amidst a a couple bites, a couple clips that have attracted some some massive attention. Um, so we struck a nerve with the youth the youth baseball stuff, protecting the pitchers, protecting the athlete, thinking about the long term development, and you know maybe sacrificing a win or a plastic trophy for the long term health of the player. So I mean, what better way? What's up, Rick Wall? Good to see you, brother. So what better way to keep that momentum rolling than to talk about coaches going for victories and trophies uh, by sacrificing the player's health, the player's elbows, man. We've been talking about pitch count, dude. Uh, We've been talking about like throwing back-to-back days and pitchers blowing out from top to bottom, dude. We see it in the major leagues. We're seeing it trickle down like the amount of like Tommy John surgeries are in now. It's a fad, dude. It's cool to get it now. I feel like, man, how how are these coaches going to be able to, like, stop this, man? Are do you are you a firm believer in? You think like these coaches should have individual plans for the players and and pitchers, like especially for the off season, but in season? Absolutely, and I think and I think it just takes a little bit of effort and putting some thought into keeping these guys healthy, right? And it's like. And it, it, it changes depending on the level that we're talking about, right? Because if I want to talk about the youth space, it's going to be a little bit differently than I talk about the high school, which is going to obviously be different than you talk about college and, and into the professional ranks. So it's like it really just depends what you're talking about. But it really goes into the coaches just having a plan and putting a plan together. And there's a and there's a way to put a plan together. I wrote something down because – I wanted to make sure I was pretty clear on this because a lot of it has to do with just pulling out a calendar, right? So you go through your off season. So if you're, I'm going to start, I'm going to talk about the high school level today on, on this, on this matter. And then you can kind of get a, a general idea of what it's like. And then you can kind of fill in the blanks on, on a youth level. Right. But so looking at, a, looking at Northeast high school baseball. So let's make that very clear, right? Because this is where I am. This is what I'm a part of. This is what I see. This is Northeast high school baseball P- practice day one, pitchers and catchers. Now they have three days of pitchers and catchers. That's new to me. March 7th with an opening day for April 2nd. Okay. So that gives you less than a full month yeah, to go, weeks. right? So you're, so you're going from an off season to a season, right? So now as a coach and you're putting together a plan for your guy with the idea of trying to keep him healthy, because why is that, why that's beneficial to everybody? Number one, it's beneficial to the kid. You're keeping him healthy. Number two, it's like, don't you want to keep this kid healthy so that when you do make a run in a, in a conference tournament or a state tournament that you have this kid available to you too many times you see these, these stud pitchers by the end of it, they can't even make it to the finish line because, because they're hurting. Right. And it's like, then they need to make a decision because, hey, I'm going to play division one baseball or I have a big summer ahead of me. It's like, do I push through this little lingering thing that's been going on or like for to sacrifice for trying to win a a state tournament? Or do I just put my eggs in the summer circuit basket Mm -hmm. and take my chances there and, and and, you know, rehab and take care of my arm and just be ready for the summer? So it really just benefits everybody. And I think just mapping out a plan for it. So, number one, it. It takes you understanding, okay, where is that pitcher at? Where is he built up to at the moment of team practice? Okay, so most of the time what you see are guys, they're attacking their offseason with the idea of building velocity and stuff, right? And I've made my point very clear on that. I don't blame them. That is what gets rewarded. 
there is a place for that. That's the time to do it. Now you have to get into your season. And how do you map that out? Okay, so March 7th, right? So I'm looking at April 2nd first, and then I work backwards. So it's like, okay, my ace, my number one, he's starting April 2nd. So that means on March 7th, he is going to throw one set, 20 pitches, maybe one set, 15, dependent, 15 to 20. Okay. Now you're going to go two days off. Okay. And then he's going to get back on the mound two days later. Now he's going to go two sets of 20 pitches. So 40 pitches total. And this is another important part of it that I think we miss out on are the up downs, right? Not just getting up there and throwing consecutive pitches. Mm. We need to, we need the heart rate to spike. We need to sit down. We need to get that heart rate elevated again. That's why you see a lot of, you know, you talk to a lot of pitching guys, they do a lot of interval running, right? Because it's, it's all heart rate based and that's kind of simulating what guys go through on the mound. So you really want to put an importance on sitting down or uh, throwing, sitting down, and then getting back up and doing it again. And you're trying to make it as game-like as possible, right? So you can give them, say, five to seven pitches in between. Okay, now let's count this 20. Let's treat it as, you know, at, uh, in between innings, I'm getting my gotcha. warm-up pitches, okay? So now after that second set, so that's your second time throwing, you're up to two innings at 40 pitches. Now you need a third day. You need a third day rest. So now that takes you to March 14th. Now it's three ups, 60 pitches, or uh, if it depends, if you go 15 or 20, depending on, and then this is all based off feel too with the kid, right? That's why communication is so important. Like these plans are put in place so that you can use the element of coaching and communicating with your player. Like, Hey, how are you feeling today? Like, are you up to doing this? Are you not? Okay, so let's just call, hey, coach, I feel great. Okay, three up, 60 pitches, okay? Now we're going to five day. Now we're getting more closer to what you're going to do in a season. So now you got to incorporate too. There's some, like high school, there's, you take Sundays off. It's not like a professional spring training. The 15th, you're off. 16th, you, uh, you throw a light pen now in between. Right. So now you can just touch them out. And here's another thing that I, I've noticed, too, man, is like these bullpens, like for these kids, it's not meant to be like an offseason bullpen. OK, it's not meant for you to go there and try to blow it out, see how hard you're throwing. It's like get on the mound, feel the mound, get your arm moving. Yeah. OK, so that's a light pen in between. Then you get a rest day. OK, so you'd, you'd be off on the 19th. Now you go to the 20th, four innings with a max of 70, 75. OK. Another five days rest pitching. Now you're looking at March 26th, five ups at 85. That takes you right to an April 2nd opening day where, gotcha. again, you use you use your judgment, your communication with that pitcher. How do you feel? But you should be around 85. You could be around 85, 90 pitches by opening day dependent. So a lot of times guys just, there's no real plan. And then they're just getting on a, like, it just goes, it spikes too fast. Okay. Or we don't put emphasis on up downs. That's why like in a high, in the high school uh, scrimmages that we had earlier in the year, I told the head coach, I'm like, Hey, I think what you should do is talk to the other coach and say, Hey, our, this is all about our pitcher. He's throwing 20 pitches. If it, if it gets to a point in the inning where you got runners on second and third, I'm sorry, but we're going to call it. We're going to roll it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy, it's about this guy. You know what I mean? We're not worried about, about the score. So yeah. that's what you do, right? And you saw that in in uh in camp all the time in a minor league setting, right? It's about building up the pitcher. I say and Mill, you know better than anybody, bro. You what do you think you needed from it, from a spring training standpoint? How many how many weeks did you need to be in Arizona before you were ready to go to an affiliate and be like, "All right, let's go." I mean, how many I mean, at bats you need? How many at bats? I mean, Damn, that's tough, bro. That's tough. That's tough. So in terms of like rhythm, tempo, like timing, yep. everything, ready yep. to go. Yep. Yep. Dude, I thought I thought relatively quickly. I would say if you ask majority of position players, it's like you give me two weeks, three max. I'm I'm ready to go. Like for sure. Getting in the in the rhythm of things. Percent. Like that gives me 35, 50 at bats. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. let's get the season ready. Where it's like 
spring training is two months long. It's for that reason. It's to build pitchers up. It's to get pitchers mm -hmm. ready for a season. So we can just incorporate these practices at a younger level, at a high school level, because in college you can you can monitor that a lot a lot better. You're around these guys every day, around them longer all year round. So that the plan becomes a little bit easier. But I think it's as simple as just looking at a calendar, bringing this pitcher in and saying, hey, this is the plan that we have for you. You be in communication. If you need a day here, you need a day there, we can prolong it, whatever. But that's going to avoid you seeing guys go seven innings and 100, 105 pitches on, on April 2nd after a three-week buildup where they're coming off an offseason where they really weren't building up their kind of developing stuff and trying yeah. to develop velocity. And they're still in that like off-season phase of their throwing. You know what I mean? So that's just kind of a quick, quick outline of um, like, how would you build up a starting pitcher to be ready um, for opening day and not just kind of throwing them out to the wolves? Dude, so. it, it makes everything you're saying, dude, is literally verbatim factual. So like the, the progression in spring training, right? Getting getting stuff ready, uh, you know, the timeline there and, and working it back, dude, it makes it makes a ton of sense. What I'm getting from this is the reason why, uh, you know, these these rules are maybe overlooked. You know, we talked about MLB's like guidelines where they're like, OK, if you're 12U, maybe this is the max. 13, you know yes. what I mean? Like they yep. have those yep. guidelines. They're soft guidelines. Yes. I guess tournaments, they travel ball. You don't have to follow that. But basically what I'm getting is that these high school coaches don't implement this stuff because it comes down to effort. And like that would take effort and like this plan of walking the shit back in a calendar, that's more effort on the high school coaches part. And you, you, yeah, the reason why they're not doing it. Yeah. It might, you're going to have to like spend time and it's going to have to get in depth and like, it's going to take effort, but maybe it's a little bit of laziness, dude. The negligence that we talked about a little bit where it's like, you're not keeping track of the pitches thrown, what the pitchers are doing, you know, if they're throwing in multiple places, like, dude, it's, it's crazy. It's effort, yeah. right. It comes down to effort. Yeah. And I think too, like, could that maybe, can that maybe put like a little bit of an end to it? Because if guys have a plan, like, hey, this guy has thought enough about me that like this is the plan set forth, like, to get me to opening day. Maybe I don't feel the need to go to the 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 pitching coach on the side, or if I do, it's like, hey, this is the map that has been laid out for me. Like, I need I need to be like this is what I need to be ready for on this day. So if you have something for me, like just you, you know, you're keeping this plan in mind where if it's like, yeah, there's no real plan, then, you know, then they are going out to those uh, coaches outside the building and trying to find help and, you know, maybe trying to get a side session because they don't know whether they're throwing this day or when they're throwing or where they have to be. It also like, it allows the kid to kind of monitor the intent and effort level. You know, when you're in these type of settings and it's like, hey, I just need to be ready for this. Like, I don't need to be ready for one one ten on, on April 2nd. You know what I mean? It just it, it makes it much more clear. And, and, and there's a plan and, and there's communication. And it's like, hey, this is what we expect from you. Go do it. Go execute. Like there's we're not hiding anything. It's 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 clear cut, cut and dry. This is where you got to be. And let's get there. And then, you know what? And, and here's another thing too, bro. And I, I was thinking about this because I, I spend time and I read the comments because I, I, like, I like to hear, I like to get people's opinions. I love conversation. I really do. I don't sit here claiming to know everything. You know what I mean? I think I've seen enough baseball. I've been around enough baseball. I've seen both sides of baseball being a catcher that I kind of have an understanding of this particular subject. But I just feel... I just lost my train of thought, dude. You're good. I've seen a lot of baseball. Seen a lot of baseball. Like, yeah, you, I've seen a lot of baseball. An expert, and it's, it's, yeah, but like no, you've I'm seen a lot. I, I'm not an expert, and it's like you get these guys, right? So a lot of people in the uh, like, oh, first off, we're comparing 12 year olds to Nolan Ryan. It's like, can we stop there? You're, you're, we're talking about a unicorn, maybe the best pitcher to ever play the game, and we're comparing him to the standard 12 year old. Like, I can't help you there. If that's the comparison you want to make, go ahead. Right. But I'm also not sitting here saying no kid should ever throw 100 pitches ever. What I am saying is that I think there is a disconnect and there is a, hey, the season starts today. Like these kids need to be ready for this when in reality they're not. And that's what's putting them at risk of injury. Right. Where it's like, hey, if you know, if I have a junior or senior and it's in May and we did a proper buildup and this feels good 
and the circumstance dictates, you know what? I, how am I pulling the senior in the state championship when he's got three outs to go and he's at 98 pitches? Because I'm scared he's going to go over 100. It's like, no, dude, you got the ball. Go get it. You want it? You got it. You feel good? Go get it. You know what I mean? But like trying to get that out of somebody on April 2nd for a pointless, meaningless freaking high school game. It's like, you know, like th there, there is like a judgment to it. But I think if you take the right steps to make sure that they get there the right way, now you're setting them up to be healthy for the later stretch in the year. And then you can make those decisions in these games that are really important. You know what I mean? Because I think it's really hard, like as a competitor, where it's like if your coach goes to you, it's like, hey, dude, you're at you're at 100 pitches. You need three outs. You're, you're done. And he's like, fuck out of here. I'm done. And that's 100%. the kind of guy I'd want. Right. Yeah. Like, get the fuck out of here. This is my game. This is my ball. And it's like, yeah, all right, go ahead. And I can feel comfortable enough as a coach. You know what? I, I did the right thing up until this point. How am I taking this away from this kid? No, you're right. This is your game. You've earned it. This is your ball. Go get your three outs. I love that. Go win us the state championship. You know what I mean? So it's just really about mapping out the marathon that is to come with that as a season. You know what I mean? And it's a little less, obviously, with a high school season. You're playing 28 games, but there is still a, there's a component to it to try to keep these guys healthy and prolong their careers. And that's all. That's all this is about. It's, it's about trying to understand what's important and, and you know, give kids every opportunity to go and play at that level. And I saw a lot of comments too, bro. It's like, you know, what percentage of a Little League team, Mill, do you think if you asked, hey, what's your goal? And then they'd say, I want to play in the major leagues. What, what percentage of a team? A, a Little League team? Dude, it's got to be high. Bro, it's got to be high. high. It's got to be high. Right? There's 10 kids. I would say at least eight of them are saying, I yeah. want to play in the major league. So it's like, okay. Like the innocence of them to not realize how fucking hard that is to do. But you know what? I'm not going to risk you not being able to do that for a freaking meaningless game. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, I, I, I just, I, I don't get the thoughts on some of these, on some of these comments. And it's like, it's, it's, it's comical to, to, to see. And it's, you know, I get want, it. Bro. Give every, get, get every opportunity to get where he wants to get. 100%, 100%. So it comes down to, man, it's, it's might be the laziness of the coach. It takes effort, but like we're, you know, we're calling that type of coach out, holding them accountable. I wanted to flip it around and maybe about, I wanted to talk about maybe holding like your players accountable. So you are in the high school space, you are helping yeah. out. Um, and yep. man, you are, you are doing stuff outside of school ball as well. Like you're giving catching lessons, hitting lessons, all this stuff. Like you are giving back to the next generation what do you see when it comes to like players acting out? What do you see when players aren't doing things the right way? How would you go about holding these players accountable now? Dude, nowadays it's like we got guys on, you know, red and black teams showing up with bright pink neon, you know, arm sleeves and cleats and acting out and pipping stuff. And they got, yeah. dude, they're just not listening. Like they're not playing the game the right way, dude. They're disrespecting yeah. it. They're disrespecting the teammates, their coaches, yeah. the superiors, the umpires, the officials. Dude, like, how would you say where we're at today in the game of baseball, whether it's in high school, middle school, like youth baseball, like, how are you holding players accountable when they're acting out or shit is not going the right way? So there's a lot to unpack there. And it's, I think, uh, this is a great conversation that I think I could talk about for forever. Right. So let me start first with the, how we've set up kids to feel like there's, there's no accountability. We've given kids, right the ability to run from any responsibility we've allowed them to run from any kind of obstacles that can come in their way with these transfer rules that you see in ncaa like the portal right like hey i'm not playing here let me just take my like pack my shit and go 100%. like i'm just gonna go to a new school i'm gonna transfer high schools like there's no like now the rules are like at a high school level in, in new jersey it's like you don't have to you used to have to sit for 30 days. Now you get a transfer without having to sit. Like really? We just yeah, bro. They don't have to sit. Their first transfer, you don't have to sit for 30 for 30 days. You can step right in and go. Oh. Um, yeah. So it's like we've we, we've created this environment where we, we've, we've allowed kids to just like any any sort of adversity that they need to face. It's just like, you know what? I'm not going to face the adversity. I'm just going to go somewhere where it's a little bit easier on me. I'm going to play and everything is good. Right. So we've like systematically have created a like that that's a terrible message to send in my opinion like it used to be 
you know what I mean? Like if you weren't playing well, get better. If your yes. coach didn't like you do things to change that narrative, like you, you used that you had to have, you had to earn things. You, you couldn't like, dude, I, I grew up on the premise, man. It was like, my dad supported me in anything I did. No, the only thing he ever said was you will, if you start something, you will not quit it. Right. If you want to like, look at it after you, after you fulfilled your commitment to that team, if you want to you decide you don't want to do it next year, that's fine. But when you sign up for something and you say, this is where I'm going to be, you're not quitting. Yeah. Same. And, 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 and that was huge. Like, cause it's like, you know what? I learned how to deal with shit that maybe I thought was unfair or maybe it like, reality smacked me in the face and it's like you're not that good like get better find ways to get better right so going back to accountability and what i see i think there's one there, there's an easy way to go about this and if i'm a coach i implement this practice right away okay i take every single player right i give them a goal sheet personal goals team goals okay beginning of the year first first day they fill out those goals i read through them now I start bringing kids individually the first week of practice and I start talking to them and we go over their goals. Okay. So now I read those goals back to them. So then I look them in the face and I tell them, okay, so understand most of the time, what you're going to see is the goals that these guys set are very, very lofty goals. Like if, 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 if you ask the guy and his goals were, man, I just want to have fun. I like, I really don't have any expectations for myself. Um, I'm just here because I want to enjoy the environment. I want to have fun. Most of the time you don't see that, but if you do, it's like, okay, like yeah. the accountability level for you, I'm not going to really, like, I have nothing to hold you against because you're not really here. Like if you start acting up and start doing shit, that's detrimental to what we want to do, like take your shit and leave. Yeah. But most of the time you're going to hear these lofty expectations that these kids put on themselves and their team. So now what you have is that leg to stand on. It's like, okay, you are the one telling me that these are the expectations for yourself. So now when you don't run out that ball that you're 0 for 2 and you pop something mm. up to third base and you don't run it out and you're telling me I want to be a state champion, I want to be an all-star, I want to be an all-state player, now I have something to turn to. It's like you are allowing me to hold you accountable because as a coach, I didn't put these expectations on you. These are on yourself. And when you don't meet those requirements of what it takes to be that guy, now I'm allowed to get in your ass and you can't say shit about it because yeah, yeah, yeah. who am I going to be as a coach to not help you and guide you try to reach those goals, right? You put those expectations on yourself. Now you bet you open yourself up to accountability. I would also take my best player in every year and I tell him, listen, uh, there's going to be some point this year. I'm going to get in your ass. Even if it was behind closed doors, I'm going to get in your fucking ass. And that's just to let everyone else know that if I can get in your ass, I'm going to get in everyone else's ass. Love but that. those are just, those are some like little things that you can do. But I think the goal thing is, is, is it's, it's a good practice because a lot of times kids, they, they get a little sensitive to, to coaching. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's just the reality of it. And that's where we are in today. And in, in, in like today, that's just where yeah. we are. Kids are sensitive and, their feelings get hurt very easily. So you have to and, and and clip it so that everyone can say, oh, you're a softy, woke, whatever the hell they want to say. It's like, no, I just understand what the hell is going on. You see Bill Belichick, the best coach of all time, maybe in any fucking sport, not have a job. Why do you think he doesn't have a job? Why do you think you see him now? He's on Pat McAfee. He's on he's doing the, the Tom Brady roast. He's doing all these public things to what? change the image. Oh, I do have a personality. I can mm. relate to the players. I can do this. You think that's, you think he wants to do that shit? Nah. We've known this. We, we've seen how this guy is for 20 years and all of a sudden he wants to do this stuff that he doesn't have a job. No, he realizes it's a different way now. It's just like the, it, it's a different way that kids, you can get the best out of kids and like being that hardo, it's not the way because we've allowed kids to just pack their shit and leave and go somewhere else with no penalty. So Dude. it's like it's a it's a situation where you have to really monitor, you know what I mean? And you have to do it in the right way if you want to get the most out of your kids. I and that's what I found is that if you put the ball in their court and they put the expectations on themselves, now you have that to go back on and be like, well, you, you told me you wanted to be an all-state player. I didn't tell you that you're an all-state player. 100%. So now when you're fucking – when you're 0 for 3 and you're throwing your helmet after we just had a four-run inning because you just ended the inning, I'm going to sit your ass on the bench because – that's not what that's not the kind of culture we want on this team. Yeah. It's not an all state player culture right there. No. Right? Hell no. I get Hell it, no. man. I get it. That's Hell awesome no, to not. be able to like hold them accountable like that. 
that's a pretty i don't want to say easy way but like that might be the lowest hanging fruit with the most impact dude you get them to talk about what they want and their goals and it's almost like they can police themselves hold themselves accountable bro exactly i love the the best player thing too man let them know like hey i'm gonna i'm gonna fucking trip you a little bit when it's time and like this yeah. is the reasoning behind it. I saw something about Ichiro when he was coming up. Um, obviously, like, dude, you know, Japanese culture, uh, very respectful. Um, they master their craft, right? Everything is an art. Uh, so, like, Ichiro, when he bunts or does anything graceful in the outfield or goes about his batting stance, it's art, bro. Like, he's a master. Um, and, dude, his dad, I remember reading something where his dad was talking to, like, one of his youth coaches. I don't even know if he was in high school. Might have been younger than that, but... I was reading somewhere his dad said, Hey man, don't, uh, don't give him praise publicly, like criticize and like, you know, tell him he's doing something wrong publicly praise him. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the adjectives are just escaping me, but like praise him behind closed doors, like show him, uh, you know, respect behind closed doors, you know, hold him accountable in front of people. Like it, that's the good yeah. way of doing it. And like, yeah. Obviously, you see what you see what's happening there. You see what he's been able to do with his career and kind of how he goes about his business. Like I'm talking about, um, you know, holding players accountable. When have you ever seen Ichiro like fucking act out or like it tossed or like it chirpy with his teammates or, was yeah. it, you know, bad teammate? It's like, dude, we are kind of breeding that culture. Maybe it starts from the top down, bro. Yeah, there's and, and that's the thing. It's like and I think it's because. You are are you a little bit scared to get in that guy's ass because of what he might do? Like, hey, I don't want to lose my best player. I don't want like that's just we we we've allowed this to happen. So it's like we've given kids options. You know what I mean? Like instead of I am committed to you, I'm committed to this school, I'm committed to this university. Like we have given kids a way out, an easy way out. Whereas as, as soon as adversity hits you in the face. Ah, uh, you know what? It's not working here. Let me let me I'm I'm in the portal. The portal's open. 100%. And that's just the way and that's and that's the way it is, man. But I also I'm... think as coaches um real quick, I, it, it's like you can never forget how hard the game is. Like the game is so damn hard to play that like we can't we can't you hold people accountable for character issues, for being bad teammates, for not hustling, for not knowing where they need to be on a certain play, but strikeouts, ground balls, errors, like, you know, walks, like it's, it's part of the game, bro. And it's a damn hard game to play. And when the wheels start turning and, and the game starts speeding up, it's really hard to get out of. So I think as a coach too, if you kind of, if you, if a kid makes an error or he strikes out and it's like, Hey, how'd you swing him? Like, why didn't you make that play? Or like, yo, just throw strikes or yeah, how, how'd you, sw how, how'd you swing at that pitch? It's like, you know, this is, it, it's hard. And when you start talking about physical stuff, like that's going to piss people off, but you can get on kids. Like kids should be wanted to be coached on the, the, the intangibles of the game because those do matter. And that's what we've talked about this before too. Like those are things that college coaches ask high school coaches about, or they ask travel coaches that guys that are with them, they, they ask them about those things. 100%. So being able to coach that, like those bad habits out of kids, that's a that's great. But like getting mad about or getting on kids for physical errors and strikeouts, like you're not gonna get anything out of that kid. He's not gonna respect you because it's like, like, dude, the game's fucking hard. Yeah, bro. So I I was reading something about um, a former MLB player. So this was on like No Filter. Eric Burns was talking about it. Uh, Troy Gloss. So he had taken over Saw a that. program. Yeah, he took over a program and I guess, you know, disciplined, sat a couple of his players because of an uh, interdisciplinary issue and the kids complained. I don't know the full story necessarily, so I don't want to like misspeak, but the premise of it is he ended up getting fired um, yeah. and like because he was holding his players accountable, right? Uh, punishing them. I don't, yeah. I don't know the interdisciplinary issue, but it's crazy to see if you try to hold your kids accountable sometimes, like it can fuck you. And it's crazy. It's crazy because I'm reading he's putting, you know, tens of thousands of dollars into this program. Uh, yeah, it wasn't program. taking like, a salary, obviously. No. Like I, I saw the same thing, dude. It was it, 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 it really speaks to to what's going on. And then I have the we have the same the same old heads in the in the uh, in the chat or in the in the comments section talking about, oh, yeah, kids don't know the game. Well, you know what? Kids don't want to be coached the game. If you try to coach them 
or discipline them in any way. Like this is what happens. You're talking about yeah. a an, an an did he win an MVP? Troy Gloss. I'm not sure, dude. A world I'm, was he a world? I think he won a World Series with Anaheim in okay. 2000. Okay. Yeah, it was uh, legit. He's got 2002, legit 2002, right? Where it's like, yo, what? Yeah. How as a parent? As a parent, how do you not want that guy? directly involved with your kid and like trying to help your kid get to the next level the guy's seen every everything you can see in the game he's forgotten more than any of those people know about baseball and you want that guy out of your program because what i'm saying he's trying to help your kid on things that matter that will help him not even in baseball dude beyond in life you know what i mean like learning to be accountable and be responsible and you know what dude life hits you in the fucking mouth yeah and then when you like your your job as as even more so as a coach, like, dude, you got to develop young men beyond baseball, turn into great husbands and great fathers and great members of the community and do the right thing. Like that's, that's the kind of imprint you want to leave like on, on kids. Like it's not about a 25 game high school season, man. It's about everything else after that. Another thing I said to these kids mills on day one was like, Hey boys, like you give me everything you got between these lines when you show up and I will give you everything I can outside of them for as long as you live. And I truly mean that. You know what I mean? Like you come here, you work your ass off, you do the right thing. You're a good person. Hey, you need me to write you a job recommendation down the road. I got you. Give me a call. I will call anybody I can. I will help you in any way that I can. And that's, you know, like that's connecting with your players. That's connecting with those guys. And it's like, I, I'm fortunate enough to play the game for a long time, dude. So like, I've seen, I've seen things coaches done that I hate hated that. I was like, yo, I would never do that. And then I've taken things from coaches that I loved. And I'm like, I want to implement that because I think like that, that meant something to me that worked for me. Like that really got like, that got me through, you know what I mean? So you just take these little nuances along the way from all these different coaches, good, bad, and different. And you just apply them to what you do. And that's like, that's the, that's how, that's how it works. You know what I'm saying? It. So it's uh it's just finding these, these, these little practices that you can, you can try to implement to, uh, help your help these kids as uh as ball players but also turn into uh good productive men dude that's it's absolutely spot on brother it's absolutely spot on i but i've played on teams where there have been bad teammates there have been players that have acted out whether they're grown men or their kids and dude i always i always try to make this uh you know i i try to I, I guess make this reference. It's like, man, everybody loves the Cleveland Indians or the, excuse me, the Cleveland Guardians out here. Can't say the Indians anymore. But like if Terry Francona loses the clubhouse, loses the respect of the clubhouse, I mean, what happens to the clubhouse? You lose respect of the manager. Like, dude, the team's going to fucking unravel. Yeah. Right. So like you have what, 25 games, uh, at least in a high school season to earn the respect of the team, of the players, hold them accountable, hold them in check. But also like you're saying, and teach them life lessons for after baseball, try to hold them accountable and, and teach them the things to be productive members of society and after baseball and shit. And like, dude, that's a great way of looking at it, bro. I, I absolutely love it. Um, dude, I was thinking we have some other stuff down on like advice to young players that are in the season right now that are kind of scuffling and advice to coaches and the parents of these young players who like aren't getting the most out of their players right now, I think we should dedicate a whole fucking episode to this. So I like, agree. I don't even know if I, I want to like touch on this. I think we should dedicate a whole episode next week to like, let's talk to players that are in slumps right now or aren't playing right or have shitty numbers or like yep. are coming off the bench. Don't have enough ABs. You know what I mean? Like Absolutely. the players in, in the players in my audience that are reaching out to me uh, are asking me questions about, Hey dude, I'm hitting, I'm hitting seventh in the lineup. I want to be leading off. And I'm, I want to say like, Hey brother, you're in the lineup. You know what I mean? Or like, Hey, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a freshman and I'm not like playing as much as I want to. And I want to be like, Hey, I do say this brother. I, I was a bench player my freshman year. I just started playing outfield because I couldn't feel the ground ball. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's, it's, there's certain ways to go about it. There's different ways to yeah. attack it. There's mindsets and like processes and shit that mm -hmm. I think that we could probably offer a lot of people uh, and, and provide a lot of value. There, hundred percent is, and just like kind of a little segue into that for next year. I don't want to give too much away, but that's like from the coach's perspective. Like that's why I think communication is so damn important, man. Because it's like 
you, you got to think not only about the nine guys on a field, but you got to think about the whole program and its totality. Right. So like that freshman that's pissed off, it's like, I don't, you, you're allowed to be pissed off. Like, is it like, is it, it like, are we, are we going about being pissed off the right way? I'm not telling you because you're a bench player, like to be excited that you're on the varsity team. Like, no, like that should, if you're a fucking competitor, that should piss you off. But I, and that's where I think, if we can, as coaches, just communicate that to the kid, you you keep that kid engaged. You know what I mean? Like, you keep him involved. It's like, hey, this is what I'm seeing. Like, you got to do this better. This is what this kid does better than you. This is why you're not playing. Like, now if I go see you put a week of practice together and you're making adjustments that I'm giving you and I see tangible evidence that that's sticking, now maybe we revisit that. Maybe I yeah. can work my way into a lineup. You know what I'm saying? So it's like communication is also important, not just – not just burying a kid on the bench and saying, man, I have no use for this guy right now. Cause you might need him down the, down the road and you might need him in two years, but guess what? In two years, he might hate your fucking guts and not want to play for you <laughs> because of how you treated him as a freshman. You know what I mean? So it's 100%. just like communicating with these kids and understanding, like, like being it with them. Don't, don't look at yourself. Like you are the superior, you are the, the manager, like you are that the guy in charge. But at the end of the day, these guys want, you want the best out of your player, man. They, that you've said it, they have to respect you. They gotta want to play for you. The best, the best I've ever played as a uh, as a player was when I had a manager that held me accountable, but I also knew would fucking do anything, anything for me. I Same. wanted to give everything I had to that guy, not even to myself, but for that guy. And it, and it was the best year, the best year I ever had in my my in my uh, professional career. Love and it. I, you know, just looking at that, it's like. Makes yeah. a lot of sense, dude. You know it's, what I mean? uh, it's synonymous. It's synonymous with each other. Like it goes hand in hand. You, if if I'm willing to play and die for you, I'm pro you know I can get in there an extra inch, right? Like I can reach in there deeper. I don't know. It's it's like easier. It's dude. It's fucking 108 degrees in August and it's humid, and like your feet are dragging, dude. You're you you were just caught a doubleheader yesterday, 14 innings, right? You're tired and like. But I, if I respect my manager and my manager's fucking got my back and I know that he's willing to die for me on a hill, like, I'll, dude, I'll reciprocate. You know what You'll I mean? You'll do like, a little, yeah. Like, yeah, bro. It's like, dude. okay, I'm hurting, but like, I fucking love this dude. You know, it's yeah, crazy exactly. that it's crazy it's like that, but it is like that. Well, yeah, it's like in any walk of life, right? You fucking, you hate your boss, you get looked over for promotions all the time. Like, you're work, you're not getting, like, that, that you're, you're, joy for what you're doing and like the energy and time that you want to put in when it's not being reciprocated it's not you lose a little bit of that fire you know what Amen. i mean where it's like where that if that same boss is like hey these are the results this is what i need you to do better get on it stay on it like keep on the gas and and you know what i mean you will be rewarded for it that keeps you engaged even though you got like kicked in the, you got kicked in the teeth right there and that moment you thought maybe you deserve something that Maybe you didn't, it keeps you engaged and it keeps you like, you know what? Like, let me go get it. Let me go get it. Where if I, if, if that same person just like, yep, this guy's getting the promotion and then didn't say a fucking word to you. You're like, man, what the hell am I doing? I get that, bro. I feel you that know? dude. I, I love that. So let's, uh, let's plan then on man. If, if you're around, you know, next Wednesday at one thirty PM Eastern again, let's plan on locking something in to talk about, what to do right now if your you know season is underway if you're mid-season if it's winding down whatever it is and you're not where you want to be if you're slumping if you're scuffling if you know the results aren't there dude let's uh let's plan on just talking to them and uh giving them some actionable advice some ideas what's worked for us and then maybe we'll uh spend the other half of the episode talking to the coaches that might need uh you know ideas or things to implement to like bring those players back in. You know what I mean? Um, Absolutely. I'd love to, dude, I'm sure we could, I'm sure we could have a action packed episode for that one, dude. I want to plan on doing that, dedicating a whole episode to it, dude. So um, let's do it. Let's do it, baby. Let's run it back next Wednesday at one 30. Deans, I appreciate you and your time, brother. I appreciate you coming on here and educating me again on the youth baseball stuff because I'm a little far removed from it, dude. So like I'm getting my info from you and dude, the way that, you're talking about it is the same way that the coaches out here are talking about it. And like, it's, it's matching up. I love everything you're talking about, brother. I appreciate you educating me and the audience on it, dude. And, and we'll be back here next week. Appreciate you, brother. Always a pleasure. Yeah.
Yeah, likewise, man. We'll see everybody here. Brick Wall, appreciate you being here again. Uh, we will catch you guys next week, 1.30. Take care, everybody.